Today we're taking a look at these MLB matches, which are happening on Saturday, April 1, 2023, and giving you our team and total picks for today. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and to push the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Also check out our Patreon if you want access to our premium picks. Our Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money, and if you are interested in props and parlay picks, check out our new channel High Stakes Props and Parlays, where you can find our player props and parlay picks predictions. You will find the link to our Patreon and to our new channel in the description and comments section below. It's Bird Pirates vs Cincinnati Reds. Second year pitcher Nick Lodolo, 4-7, 3.66 ERA, 1.25 whip, takes the mound for the Pirates on Saturday. Lodolo faced the Pirates once in his career, going 6.1 innings and allowing three earned runs on six hits in September last season. Despite getting the L in the 10-4 Pirate victory, he pitched well, striking out 11 Cincinnati batters and not issuing a walk throughout. The Pirates' win versus Lodolo completed a four-game sweep of the Reds at the Great American Ballpark. Lodolo pitched much better at home than away last year, posting a 2.85 ERA at the Great American Ballpark versus 5.11 on the road. In 14.2 innings pitched in his rookie year in April, he had a 5.52 ERA. The Reds had a 33-48 record at home last season overall and went 4-6 in 10 games played versus the Pittsburgh at the Great American Ballpark. The Reds had an abysmal start to the 2022 season, winning only three times in 24 tries in April. Only two teams in Major League history had a worse April record. The Pirates beat the Reds 12 times in 19 games played during the 2022 season, and they covered the run line in six of the last seven games played against them. They won by four or more runs in four of the five victories. The Pirates continued their winning ways at the Great American Ballpark, beating the Reds 5-4 on opening day. The Reds had only 34-47 records against the spread at home in 2022. While both teams struggled on the road all season, Pittsburgh played excellent away versus the Reds in 2022 and won six of nine games played at the Great American Ballpark, including a four-game sweep. The Reds managed to win only once in ten home games in April last season. The Pirates were 4-6 to six on the road to begin the season last year. Nick Lodolo had difficulty in the first month of 2022, going 1-2 to two and allowing nine runs and 14 hits in 14.2 innings. Hill started four games last April for Boston, allowing seven earned runs in 17 innings pitched with six walks and 11 strikeouts. With no significant upgrades during the offseason to combat the Pirates' success in their home stadium, look for the Reds to stumble out of the gate again this year as they continue to rebuild. Take the Pirates with the points. Pittsburgh went under the run line or pushed in six of their nine 2022 games played against Cincinnati at the Great American Ballpark. In Pittsburgh's sweep of the Reds last season, the games went under or pushed in three of four. The game between the two teams on Thursday did go over the point total by one, but Pittsburgh was limited to six hits and 26 batters struck out in the game in total. The Reds had an overall over-under record of 38-43 at home last season. Both teams ranked near the bottom of the league in key offensive categories. While both teams added some veteran bats to the lineup, there is little evidence that the additions will result in a significant boost in runs scored. The Reds' batters hit left-handers slightly worse than right-handers last season, .220 BA versus left-handers .223 BA versus right-handers, so launching an offensive attack against Lodolo will be an uphill battle for them. They had only a .362 slugging percentage versus left-handers last year. Pittsburgh batters struggled mightily on the road in 2022, posting a .216 batting average and a .280 OBP. Most signs point to a lower scoring affair in this game. Look for this game too under the run total. Baltimore Orioles vs Boston Red Sox. If we could turn back the clock to 2018, this one would be a massive mismatch on the mound in favor of the Red Sox. However, that's not something that is feasible, and we have to take into consideration how little he's been able to provide for Boston in recent seasons. Baltimore saw Creamer take massive strides forward last season, and the hope is that he can build off that success this season. The Orioles have the bats to do serious damage, as we saw in the opener. You have to think that the Orioles' bullpen is better than Boston's at this point in time, and they have the ability to produce crooked numbers at the plate. That's enough to give the visitors the upper hand in this one. Our team pick is Baltimore Orioles. These teams just scored 19 combined runs on opening day, and there are question marks on both sides of the game on the pitching side of things. Dean Creamer pitches to contact, and with the shifts banned, he is going to struggle a bit more. Chris Sale has not pitched enough due to a myriad of injuries, and that leaves a lot of questions about what his stuff will look like here. 
the over has hit in the last five Orioles games on Saturday, as well as in five of the previous Red Sox games following a loss, so go with the over here. Our total pick is over 9 points. Minnesota Twins vs Kansas City Royals. We didn't see much offense in the opening game of the series, as the teams managed to muster a pair of runs between them. Lyles has been homer prone in his career, allowing 64 in the last two seasons combined, including a league-leading 38 bombs in 2021 with the Rangers. While he may avoid that fate in this start thanks to the wind blowing from left to right, the fact remains that the Royals haven't shown anything at the plate to inspire confidence. Minnesota wasn't great offensively, but that was mainly due to missed opportunities, as they left a small village on the Bassa Pass. The Twins should be better in those situations than we saw Thursday, and until the Royals show some level of competence at the dish, you have to give Minnesota the upper hand. Our team pick is Minnesota Twins. What's worth noting is that the big guns of Byron Buxton, Carlos Correa and Max Kepler are a combined 6-26.231 against him. If Lyles can at least limit the production at the top of the lineup, then we should be in for a lower scoring affair. Let's take the under in this one. Take the under 8.5 runs. Detroit Tigers vs Tampa Bay Rays. Eduardo Rodriguez allowed three runs on three hits and two walks in losing the opener. The Tigers' bullpen went 2.2 innings in following the opening day starter, allowing a run, three hits and a walk. Spencer Turnbull is second in line for Detroit starters. Tommy John's surgery erased the right-hander's entire 2022 campaign, and this will be his first regular start since June 4, 2021. He looked strong in spring training, throwing 12 innings in four starts, while striking out 12 and allowing just two walks. Turnbull has one career start against Tampa, a loss in which he allowed three earned runs in five innings. The Rays were quick to put behind them the embarrassment of raising a 2022 wild card banner before the game, with a command performance in the season opener. It was their second consecutive shutout over the Tigers dating back to last season. McClanahan struck out six and allowing just four hits and a walk, while making 15 of 22 first pitch strikes, which set him up for success. Behind him three relievers allowed just two hits and two walks over the final three frames. Right-handers Ak Eflin is the Game 2 starter for Tampa Bay. Signed for three years and $40 million in the offseason, he makes his American League debut after seven seasons with the Phillies. Eflin was 3-5 with a 4.04 ERA, tossing 75.2 innings and 20 appearances. His game has an intriguing pitching matchup that may not make someone pause on name recognition, but in terms of two guys looking to make a statement, this is it. Eflin, who has not yet faced the Rays in his career, will be looking to make a strong Rays debut and show them he's worth the money that they aren't always quick to dish out. Turnbull is likely bursting at the seams to get back after losing a year and a half. The Tigers starter was looking really good prior to his injury, going 4-2 with a 2.88 ERA in nine starts. Detroit did have as many hits as Tampa Bay on Thursday, they just didn't cash in on their opportunities. The Rays also benefited from two solo home runs. Expect the Tigers bats to be a little more productive and for Turnbull to be strong. While I'm not fully confident they pull off the win, I think Detroit does keep this within a run, at the least. Take the Tigers plus 1.5 goals. One of four shutouts on opening day, these two put up just four runs against an identical total in game one. It was the first time in the last seven meetings and these two did not combine to score seven or more runs. While I do expect the starters to have decent outings, I do also expect that initial nerves will allow the offenses an early chance at some runs for both sides. The over is 6-0-1 in Detroit's last seven versus a team with a winning record and is 3-2-2 in the last seven meetings between these two. In those last seven meetings, they have a combined average of 7.6 points per game, and that includes two shutouts. Despite what they showed in Game 1, I like these two teams to come out swinging heavier lumber in Game 2. Our total pick is over 6.5 runs. Cleveland Guardians vs Seattle Mariners When your 2022 season is marked by offensive inconsistencies, particularly with slugging percentage, the worst way to begin a new campaign is by failing to put up runs. Yet, that's exactly what Cleveland did on Thursday, only recording four hits and one extra base hit from Jose Ramirez. The Guardians have excellent bat-to-ball skills, with the lowest strikeout rate among all teams in 2022, but their lack of pop resulted in an offense with a WRC plus of 99. 100 is league average, so their contact prowess isn't going to be enough without someone besides Ramirez and hopefully new addition Josh Bell. Slugging.The good news is that their pitching staff, which was top 10 in ERA, walks, and hits allowed among many other stats in 2022, seemed as strong as last season. The one blemish was reliever James Karinchak, who recorded only one out and allowed all three runs that decided the game. 
He was known to work at a slow pace on the mound and has solid career numbers, so he's probably one of the many pitchers still adjusting to the pitch clock. Every other pitcher that came in on Thursday tossed zeros. Aaron Civale is starting this game, and he had a rough 2022, with an even rougher postseason appearance to cap it. Civale made 20 starts last season and finished with a career-high 4.92 ERA. His lone 2022 start against the Mariners came in Seattle, and he allowed four runs and two homers in 6.1 innings. However, Civale showed improved command last season, with career bests in strikeouts per nine and strikeout-to-walk ratio. Cleveland has their eyes set on winning the Isle Central again and making it further than the Alds. They added Josh Bell to the lineup hoping to improve upon their home run total which was 29th last season. Their pitching is a bit banged up right now but shouldn't be a concern this season. Aaron Civale struggled in 2022 and his issues began early. In his first six starts, he allowed at least four runs every single time. His career ERA in April is 5.25, tied for his highest among any month of the season that he's pitched. Considering the Mariners are home and have a more potent lineup than the Guardians, that doesn't bode well for Cleveland. Logan Gilbert is a solid pitcher, and he knows how to keep the ball in the park. It's difficult to string together hits and manufacture runs, so he should have a strong outing against a lineup that doesn't have much power. Seattle should take this game. Our team pick is Mariner's money line. Neither team has been able to provide too much power in the extremely early portion of the year, as Seattle has one team homer thus far, while Cleveland has zero as a squad thus far. Neither team is patient at the plate either with just five walks between these hitters as well, so they need to continue to work the counts. Aaron Civale and Logan Gilbert should be able to put up zeros as they are doing better than their baseball saving page has shown from last year. The under has hit in five of their last six games against one another in T-Mobile Park, so go with the under 7.5 runs here.